I'm coming. More than two years ago, when we were finishing Last of Us Part Two, and we were working on those flashbacks within that scene for the first game, we got excited with the idea of like, oh man, what if we made The Last of Us Part One to look as good, if not better, than what we have done with Last of Us Part Two, which we really pushed the boundaries of like what we could do from gameplay and a graphical standpoint, and felt like if we do that, we could actually come even closer to our original vision of what the first game would have been had we not been constrained by technology. The original creative vision of The Last of Us, I think in a lot of ways, was larger than what the PlayStation 3 was capable of. The tech of the PS5, it's like an open box of, of tools and goodies that we can play from and draw from. The 4K, HDR, improved haptics, 60 frames, help us to reimagine The Last of Us. It gave us opportunities to rebuild our characters at the highest fidelity. Not only are the characters more detailed, I mean down to the, the irises and the pupil depth. You know, you fall into the eyes of the characters. Aside from that, the facial animation is just way more believable. Like all the nuances, all the little subtle reactions, glances, glares, right? Like you get all of it almost closer to sort of the original performances. So no matter what, you stick to me like glue. Like glue. Like glue. Got it. Good. Good. We are able now to not only just have the highest fidelity characters in the cutscene, but also in gameplay. It's the same character, so now we can do these seamless transitions in and out. Every part of the game has benefited from seamless transitions and emotional scripting. Pretty good, huh? Our stories happen in gameplay on a stick. She knew my mom. All this stuff is designed to keep you constantly in this world. Riley, come here. <laughs> now you got this, go. One of the things that the PlayStation 5 is really enabling is that we're able to have a density of physics objects in a scene that we just we could never do before. Like this has always been <laughs> the dream is to have this number of bumpables, chippables, breakables, destructible objects in a scene. It just makes the world feel rich, makes it feel lived in. Materials kind of have the properties that you'd expect. The turret truck in, in Pittsburgh, when it's firing at you and it's just ripping apart the concrete and sending objects flying left and right. Seeing things break, like there's fear, there's a real fear that it invokes. And it's giving us a much more dynamic range of gameplay to play with. Around him! Our AI tech has just increased incredibly. What we were building the basis off of was The Last of Us Part II's AI. And it has sophisticated systems for things like the fundamental knowledge model of how these NPCs perceive and understand what the player is, is much more sophisticated. Now how the enemies are communicating with each other, how they're chasing you, how they're flanking you, how intense that fight feels, it's so much more rewarding coming out of it from the other side. One of the other big AI improvements is the buddies. The Buddies technology that we developed for The Last of Us Part II has this very sophisticated understanding of like, okay, this is where the enemies can see their exposure. We not only have exposure, we have future exposure. So Buddies can know, okay, that enemy is walking forward and they're about to round this corner. So in three seconds, that corner is gonna be exposed. So I'd better move now to avoid this enemy seeing me. This really lets the buddies make very complex uh, decisions and maintain that, that feeling of stealth much more believably. Another big enhancement to the gameplay is that we have this technology called motion matching. Motion matching is this technology that's basically using logic that tries to match the desired movement to a bucket of hundreds of animations. A mo-capped actor has gone in and run this whole gauntlet of movements to get a really full set of all the different ways a person can move. And then it's basically every frame trying to find the best matching animation that fits the path of where the character is going to go. And this motion model just gives this really seamless sense of transition. The player's movement is just a lot cleaner. It's this really smooth organic movement through the space. 
first we just had to build that core experience. And then beyond that, we wanted to add uh, several features that fans have been asking for. For example, we now have a permadeath mode. Along that, we've added a brand new speedrun mode so players can time themselves. There's a whole community of gamers that just want to see how fast they can play through this game. Beyond that, we added a bunch more of unlockables. So there's all these different outfits for Ellie and Joel that uh, people can unlock. A model viewer mode so people can really appreciate the details. We added award-winning accessibility features. Every single accessibility option that we offer, that's a barrier removed for someone. As she surveys the apartment, her eyes wander to Joel. She steps past the couch. He wears the wristwatch Sarah gifted him, which now has a cracked face. To my knowledge, this is the first PlayStation game that has audio description built into the game, built into the cinematics. Now it's nighttime. Joel stirs in his sleep. And that's really the way we've tried to push the frontier of accessibility on this game. So much of the identity of The Last of Us is the world. We revamped completely the art direction. You know, everything from these expansive vistas that not only are they beautiful, but you feel the environments. You feel the environments in a much more visceral way. The rooftops overlooking the Capitol building, for example, like just the, the breath of fresh air when you go up there and you just like, you feel that sort of release in, in tension. And then, you know, to juxtapose that, down in the, the tunnels in wilds and you get that dank, flooded tunnel feel, that humidity, you can actually feel it. All these environments are just completely reimagined. Now we got our engine on the PS5, those haptics, the 3D audio, the fast loading. It really creates a much more immersive and because of that much more emotional experience. One of the things I absolutely love with the 3D audio in The Last of Us Part 1 is being able to hear an enemy before they sneak up on you. And trying to do a, a stalker fight with the 3D audio is just so much fun. You're hearing them skitter around in a different room and you're hearing them trying to get up behind you. Having that two-part reaction of like hearing, turning, seeing, reacting, it, it just really heightens that sense of just being grounded. You are in this character, you are in this world. Now, with the PlayStation 5, the amount of control that developers have over the dual sense it's really, really cool. All the guns in the game have a variable amount of resistance on the triggers when you aim them. The way it works with the bow is that at the very beginning, when they're starting to draw the bow, there's a little bit of resistance. And then as the bow gets tauter and tauter, the amount of resistance is increasing. And then when you release the bow, you're also getting that resistance going out of the trigger. When you are aiming and firing the shotgun, you're gonna get a haptic vibration on the shot. And then what I think is one of the ways that the DualSense really advances things is you're gonna get a haptic vibration on the pump of the shotgun. And what's much more sophisticated about that on the DualSense is that in effect has a little like speaker in it. <laughs> and it's playing an, an audio file that comes through in the vibrations. And those two beats is what you're gonna feel on the controller. Good spot. This also ties in to the new workbench animations. So if you're seeing Joel taking apart a gun or screwing something in or putting a new stock on a gun, that moment where he's like jamming that on, you're gonna get that haptic feedback on that. We have, you know, haptics all across the board, you know, for all the moments you kind of expect for clambering, jumping, landing, meleeing, getting meleeed, like all those kind of high intensity moments we have represented in the haptics. What I personally absolutely adore is the way we can enhance the really like quiet, subtle moments of gameplay. So it's like when Joel goes in to pet the giraffe, getting that little light touch on the haptics as he's petting the giraffe. To me, that's the essence of The Last of Us. It's the high tension moments, it's the low tension moments, it's all of it feeling grounded, it's your feeling immersed in this world. It's all about bringing you along with that story in as many ways as we can. And that's what the new technology on the PlayStation 5 is allowing. So is that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. There's something special about that core experience of 
playing as Joel and Ellie on this journey, then to take that experience and really honor it and keep the authenticity of it, but elevate it in every way possible, whether it's pipeline, whether it's art direction, whether it's a technology, everything that allows us to make that experience better. Not different, extremely better. That's why to me this is the definitive way to play The Last of Us.